Short intro guys, because this tutorial is really long in three parts to be exact, and it's probably gonna be a to edit. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this video, it's technically a remake of a remake of a video of my personal channel. I originally made a video of a digipack slash a CD jacket when I just started my personal channel and it was very bad. It was in two parts, too long, a lot of things, so I decided to recreate it. And that video is still up running on my personal channel. I'll leave it in the description in case you wanna watch it. It was okay, but throughout that time, I have learned more techniques in order to make your CD jacket slash digipack as best as you can. So that's what we're going to do today. I originally focused on making fan-made CDs of my favorite singers, such as Demi Lovato and Lady Gaga. But recently I have found myself making mixtapes and personalizing the design to give it as gifts to somebody that I care about. So that has come to tell you that this video, this tutorial will help you out whether you want to give it as a gift or you want it for your personal use. Whatever you decide, this tutorial will help you nonetheless. We're going to start by downloading the files that they are on the description. It is crucial you download my files because I have the measurements and everything ready within the files. So it's very important that you use the files that I put in the description. They're going to be set on my personal OneDrive folder set as public so that everybody can download them for free. You're going to click the link on the description of this video. The link will lead you to my OneDrive folder I have set on public. You see three folders. To download everything as a whole, on the bar that is above the files next to the share button, there's a download button. You're going to click it and this will download the folder as a zip file. You'll need a zip extractor to get the files. Once you have extracted, you'll see the three folders. One one labeled design templates, another labeled templates, and the last one labeled paper sizes. For now, let's open the folder labeled design templates. Although this is not a design tutorial, these files is where I recommend you to use to make your designs. All the elements from the CD jacket slash digipack are the same size. So we need this file to design everything. And the other file is the spine. Now, if you want to design directly into the other file, you can, although I find it a bit complicated because you need to be flipping the file as you go. Once you have your designs, you need to export them individually. Import them back to Photoshop and this time open the file called one CD jacket that is on the folder called templates. Here, we will place our design pieces. The two squares at the bottom will have the outer design, the front cover on the bottom left, and the back cover, the one with the track list in it, on the bottom right. And also, don't forget to place the spine in the middle. Now, the inner designs, we will flip the file. Go to image, image rotation 180 degrees. Here, you can place whatever image you may want to use. Once you place everything, you also need to add any type of colors to these tabs. I recommend you to color the tabs in a color that is similar to the main palette of your design. Or you can also extend the design to the tabs to be on the safer side. Once you have finished putting everything in its place, import the image as a high resolution JPEG. Now we're going to open the folder called Paper Size. And we're going to open the file called Tabloid Size. We're going to paste the image we just created on the file and flip it necessarily so that it can fit. The image needs to be 27.6 centimeters height and 32.6 centimeters width. After we resized it, we're going to flip it as necessary so it can fit on the file. Remember, there's always a quarter of an inch border when we print. Save the image as a tabloid size in high resolution and save it to print on cardstock on tabloid size. And at the end, you should have something like this. With a tabloid slash cardstock, we simply cut the shape out, taking extra care on the edges where the inner design is. I use an acrylic ruler and an X-Acto knife to cut it as accurate as possible. Once the figure is all cut, it's time to make the folds. In my original video, I mentioned that using the back of the X-Acto knife should do the trick. Then, once it's cut with the bone folder or the back of your X-Acto knife or scissors, you're going to run it on the fold lines. This will make the folding process much easier and professional looking. But honestly, with time, the fold wears out and eventually the pieces come off. 
Since that, I've discovered that the best way to make a fold is by using a ballpoint pen with no ink in it, since the tip of the pen is not a hard tip. It will score the line but not mark it, and therefore not rip it. If you don't have an empty pen, I'll recommend you to use a plastic knife. We're going to score the lines on all these places from the inside to avoid rips on the outer design. Once we score, I recommend you to take the tap and place it underneath the ruler and fold the piece over, like so, because if you fold the tap in Instead, you might damage it slightly. Once you have folded everything, all that there's left to do is to glue all the tops to the inner pieces. You can use a regular glue stick, but I like using double-sided tape. All you do is place tape on the tops and cut the excess off with an X-Acto knife. The tape is narrower than the tops, and that's a good thing. So I place the tape in the middle of the top, but honestly, I just eyeball it. I follow by peeling the backing paper of the tape. Before we start sticking the tabs to the inner pieces, notice that these two tabs meet at the ends. We're going to stick one in front of the other before moving on. Now that the tabs are joined together by the corner, it's time to make our CD jacket come together. I like to take the corner of the inner piece and join it with the corner of the tabs, and then smoothing the rest. Since the double-sided tape I am using is very strong, I wouldn't be able to unstick it and then stick it back. I do take my time with this step, and I repeat this with the other side. And just like that, we have our own CD jacket slash digipack. Now, if you don't have tabloid slash cardstock, there's two alternative methods which I'll show you right now. Number one, legal size paper method. Once you have exported the file, we're going to open Microsoft Word. We're going to the main bar in the tab Layout, click on Size, and resize the page to legal size paper. Legal size paper is basically like two A4 sheets of paper together height-wise. Import the image to Word. Double-click the image and click on Wrap Text and click in front of text. Once you have done that, left-click the image and click on the size position. Once the window is open, there should be two box marked. We're going to uncheck where it says Lock Aspect Ratio. After doing that, we're going to size the image 27.6 cm height and 32.6 cm width. Next, we're going to flip the image 90 degrees to the left. Now, we should have this, and it doesn't fit our page. Not to worry, we're going to print it in two pages. We're going to copy the image and paste the copy copy on the second image. On page 1, we'll use the crop tool and leave only the inner design. In the second page, we're going to cut the inner design and only leave the outer design. Once you have this, you'll print it out. This is a little bit more time consuming because as you see, the pieces are not together. But not to worry, since we printed them separately, we left the border in because we want the same shape as if we had printed it on tabloid size. So what we're going to do first is to take the main piece of the outer part, if you will, and with our ruler, we're going to leave a blank 1cm space on the top of the pieces so that we can glue the inner piece onto it. And before we stick the inner piece onto the outer piece, we can cut away the excess paper. We put the outer piece on the side and we move our attention to the inner piece. With this one, we cut the edges of all the sides, leaving the guide in for now. Afterwards, what we need to do is glue these two pieces together like so. Granted, it's going to have a seam down the middle, but this is the second best way we can do this. What I'm going to do is optional, but I find that it gives me the best result. I take some washi tape and get rid of some of the glue on my upper arm and I'm going to line it like so. I grab a scrap piece of paper and I stick the piece on top and with my glue stick I'm going around the top where we left the one centimeter border and remove the tape. If you use the tape, be very careful. We're going to grab the inner design and stick it where we added the glue and the image should look like this. Once the image is like this, since it's printed on legal size computer paper, we cannot actually just start forming it into the CD jacket. We need to give it some foundation. So we're going to put glue all over the back of the image. In the past, I used to use spray adhesive because it was easy to use, but you can get away with using a regular glue stick. I would not recommend you to use liquid glue because that will create wrinkles in both paper and the poster board. Once you have the back covered with glue, we're going to stick it on top of some poster board. Paste it and smooth with your clean hands to the paper 
paper to make sure it adheres properly. After this, I'm going to take some clear contact paper and cover the pieces. This is optional, but this makes your design last longer. I didn't do this with the cardstock method since it's printed on glossy tabloid paper and it has a thin layer that protects the design. But since this is just computer paper, I'll recommend you to protect it. And you'll finish off the same way we did earlier, marking the folds, fold, tape, glue, bam, ready. Number two, A4 size paper method. Once you have exported the files, we're going to open Microsoft Word. Import the image to Word. Double click the image and click on wrap text and click in front of text. Once you have done that, left click the image and click on size and positions. Once the window is open, there should be two boxes marked. We're going to uncheck where it says lock aspect ratio. After doing that, we're going to size the paper 27.6 centimeters high and 32.6 centimeters width. Now we should have this and it doesn't fit our page. Not to worry. We're going to print it in three pages. We're going to copy the image and paste it on the rest of the pages. On page one, we'll use the crop tool and leave only the bottom right design. On page two, cut and leave the bottom left design, including the spine. And on the last page, we're going to cut each of the inner designs and line it one on top of the other to fit both image on the same page. I'll recommend you to leave a little bit extra of each opposite side image so that it'll be easier to glue together once we print it. Once you have this, you'll print it out. I like to start cutting around the image roughly since it was printed in separate pages and there's a lot of scrap paper. Just make sure to not cut the top of the cover and back cover as we need a little extra later on. I'm going to start working with the other pieces. I'll take the cover and I will start cutting through the guideline as I said, leaving one centimeter border on top and I repeated it with the back cover. Now that I have them cut, how am I going to join them together? As you see here, we have the spine on both pieces, so basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of them and glue it on top of the other piece spine to join them together. I use again the washi tape brick and I slap some glue on one of the sides. I remove the washi tape and I finish by joining the outer pieces together. Once the two pieces are joined as one, we basically repeat the same thing as the previous method but this time we stick each of the inner designs separately since they were printed unattached. And to finish, we follow the same steps as the previous method. And like that, we have three different versions of how you can make a two-panel CD jacket slash digibag. And that is it for this week's video, guys. But this week, we get not one, not two, but three videos. If you want to learn how to make your very own CD booklet and CD label without sticker paper, you can click the links at the end of this video that will be on the screen as well as in the description. This will help you to complete your CD jacket slash digipack. If you only wanted to create the box, the CD jacket slash digipack, you have come to the end of the project. And that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you like it. If you like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are, thank you so much. You can follow me on my social media, Twitter and Instagram at Crafter Training. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, yeah, yeah, guys. Click on the top to watch the tutorial on how to design and create a booklet. Click on the bottom to watch the tutorial on how to design and create a CD label without sticker paper.